Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace hanging out in Block Studio in Phoenix, Arizona, and I have new toys! <laughs> We're gonna play with those. And so joining me today is Sydney. You recognize her from the last video we did right here in the same studio on clamshell lighting. Welcome back. And in this episode, we're gonna do more clamshell lighting, but because I have some new toys, we're gonna to do it in a totally different style and we're gonna create a different look. And so Sydney, she's gonna pop out and I'm gonna to explain to you what I have in my hand and why this is gonna make us have different looking photos. So first thing I have here is a new camera R5. So a Canon R5 and so I'm excited to be shooting with this today. And then on that, I have a really uh, old lens that I've had for, I don't know, 15 years or so. This is an 85 millimeter 1.2 lens. It is a beast. I love this guy. So this is an EF lens on a uh, EF adapter to my R camera. And this lens, what it allows me to do is I can shoot wide open at 1.2. It's an 85 1.2 to get extremely shallow depth of field. Now, the cool thing about that is that allows us to create beautiful portraits where we have the eyes in focus and everything else on Sydney's face is gonna fall out of focus. Now, normally, if I'm shooting with studio strobes, sometimes those are just a little bit too bright for a 1.2 lens, and so it's difficult to be able to do that without a neutral density filter or something. But I have some new Nan lights, and so we're gonna be playing with those. These are always on constant lights, and because they have some amazing light modifiers, I've got a big octabox and some smaller octaboxes with grids, we can shape the light and create exactly what we want. And so, Sydney, come on back. What we want to do now is to walk through this lighting setup. So we've already got it set up behind us and show you what each of these lights uh, are doing and then we'll make some great portraits. So let's get going. When you're working in a studio with constant light, it's really important that you control the light by turning off and getting rid of any extra light. So we've blocked the windows, but the next thing we need to do is turn off all the lights inside the studio. So let me do that right now. All right, now we're ready to go. Sydney is illuminated with basic clamshell lighting. So we have the big force of 300 at the top, and then we have a nice silver reflector underneath, bouncing light underneath her chin and keeping everything illuminated very evenly. Then we have these two fours of 60 Bs that are adding highlights on her chin. And then both of these have grids to keep the light from bouncing into our lens and creating lens flare. All of that combined creates a pool of light that gives us a beautiful portrait. I have everything set up. Sydney is in her chair. I have all of the lights in place, but I want to walk through everything that I've done to create this portrait. The first thing we need to do is work with this clamshell light that we have set up. I went into detail in the last episode of Exploring Photography about what clamshell lighting is. And so we're using the exact same thing this week, except for now we have an octobox and we have a reflector instead of what we had last week. The same lighting setup though, still applies. Now to begin with, I want to walk you through how I get to something I like to call absolute black. And that is where I'm eliminating all the light that I don't want in this scene. Now normally if I'm shooting with studio strobes, I just do that by uh, uh, setting my camera to sync speed and then dialing down my aperture until I have eliminated all the ambient light. But this is different because we're shooting with constant light. That means any ambient light in the room, anything coming through the windows, that can influence our shot. So we wanna eliminate all of that. And so what I need to do is figure out what camera settings are going to do that. Now I know that we want that really shallow depth of field look that we talked about, so I'm shooting at 1.2. I know that I want to lower my ISO so that I'm eliminating any extra light. So I'm shooting at ISO 100, but what I don't know is what my shutter speed should be so that I have a completely black picture without my constant lights on. So because we're shooting with constant lights, that means I can go as fast as I want with my shutter speed. So let's figure out what the exposure should be. So to do this, I need to eliminate any light that is extra, meaning this video light that's lighting me up right now. So I'm gonna turn that off so I don't have that polluting anything. And now we're in the darkness. So I'm gonna zip over here. The other thing I need to do is shut off this light. So we need to have all the lights off and just have light as it is in the studio. So right now I can see that at about, oh, 1.2 and 30th of a second, I'm getting plenty of light. I don't want that. So I need to increase my shutter speed and I'm just gonna keep increasing my shutter speed until I see all the ambient light go away. And that is about at 1 800th of a second. I get a totally black photo. 
Now what I can do is turn on my key light and then I can adjust this up or down. So uh, I know because we've done this before, I need to have that at about 44%. So when I do that and I look through here, it is a correct exposure. If it was overexposed, I would just dim that a little bit. If it was overexposed or underexposed, I would increase that. So I can just fiddle with this until I get it exactly the way I want. And the cool thing is because it's constant light, I can see exactly what's happening. So I'm gonna take a shot. I'll look at that. We have a correct exposure. That is pretty cool. So now we need to do the next thing. I'm just gonna go over here, kill this guy. And then I'll turn on this light and then this light over here. So these take a couple seconds to turn on and then bam, bam they are going to turn on. Now what I'm going to do here is I need to make sure that I direct those so it just hits the side of Sydney's face. I don't want it to hit uh, too little so we get just a tiny rim of light or too much where it's lighting too much of her face. We just want a little teeny highlight on the side of her face. So to do that, I need to make sure that my key light is turned off and then take some test shots and then adjust accordingly. So let's do that right now. So what I'm gonna do is I've already sort of line these up and so I'm going to look through here and because these are hot lights I can see exactly how they're illuminating Sydney's face and we can take a look at that and you can see that that's just a tiny little kiss of light. If I wanted more or less light I could go back over here and then I can rotate these to the left or to the right to give us more or less light on the side of Sydney's face. I like how they are right now and again I can increase or decrease the power of those lights to increase or decrease how much light we're getting on her cheeks. But we've already dialed those in, so now let's turn everything on and walk through each of these lights step by step so you can see exactly what they're doing. One of the tricks with adding kicker lights is to make sure they're exactly right is just take a few photos with nothing except the kickers. And so uh, I've done that. We want to make sure that uh, Sydney understands where to put her face. So if she looks to the left or to the right, we can see that that is going to change how that light falls on her cheekbones. And so it's always a good idea to shoot a few photos and then show your model what's happening so that they are fully aware of what they need to do to get the best results possible. Let's talk about focusing. I have my camera set to one shot focus, autofocus, and I have it on eye detection. That's something that the R5 is really good at doing. So it recognizes faces and specifically it can recognize eyes. So that's what I have my camera set to. Now, not all cameras have that. And so if you don't have that on your camera, I suggest you use autofocus and then use a single spot focus so you can put that spot on your subject's eyes or if you're really good you can use manual focus but generally autofocus is going to be much faster. Now if you're having problems with uh, either the model moving or you moving you might want to switch over to continuous focus or AI servo mode on Canon cameras and what that will do is it will have your camera always focusing and so if there's any movement that will keep your subject clearly in focus. You're gonna have to play with it and figure out which focus mode works best for you with your specific lens and specific camera. For me, the face detection, eye detection mode on the R5 is spectacular and everything is nice and crystal clear and it's really, really fast, even with the EF lens. And so that's what I'm using, but try it out. You're gonna have to do a little bit of practice to figure out what works best for you. It's really important to understand how shallow the depth of field is in these portraits. I mean, they're really shallow. So you'll get the eyes, but the ears are gonna be out of focus. And what that means is it's really important to communicate with your model uh, what exactly that is, because any movement forward or back can throw everything out of focus. And so I've done a few things. So the first one, my camera, you can see here, it's on a tripod. That's gonna keep me from moving the camera forward and back and throwing things out of focus. The second thing is Sydney is on a stool. That's gonna help her not move forward and back just by moving her feet. Sometimes that will happen. And then also I've communicated to Sydney and shown her some photos to make sure that she is not moving around.
really love these photos, Sydney. Now this 1.2 lens is magic. And just because I forgot to mention it before, I did use my lens hood to keep from extra light from bouncing around and giving us lens flare. But the point is a really wide aperture and a really shallow depth of field can change that clamshell lighting from really spectacular to super spectacular. And I love how those turned out. It's really simple. You can do this with constant lights. You can do it with studio strobes. You can do it with speed lights. The point is to make sure that you have really nice soft light coming from behind to highlight those cheek bones, a really nice soft clamshell light, and everything is going to work out just great. Speaking of just great, if you want to see more of Sydney's stuff, I've included links to her social in the description of this video so you can check out her Instagram and all the goodness there. Also, don't forget to sub subscribe to Adorama TV. It's free and turn on the bell. We have live stuff coming to you all the time. If you don't have that bell turned on, you're not going to get a notification and you're going to miss out on some great content. So make sure you do that. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again next time.